Now, I'm not saying that you can't learn English with this. You can. But what else would they be learning? Here's another one we could do. This is, uh, these are, are called the Challenge Club Friends. And the Challenge Club Friends do fun things together. They do challenges. They do things like jumping out of airplanes. Um, they go uh, motorbike racing and stuff. They get together and do these challenges, very high adrenaline sport challenges. If we look at the uh, Challenge Club Friends, we see there are a balance of different races and genders. There's a black man, there's an Asian woman, I think. Uh, they're young, they're good looking, and they completely don't exist. I have invented them to teach what I want to teach. So, and again, we can use this and students can still learn with this. But they are invented people uh, fit to uh, a certain purpose. What are the students learning through this? Maybe not that much. And my feeling is that there's been a lot uh, of lessons that have one or two of those other, those, those kind of parameters. And what I'm trying to do is have other lessons where people feel that they are learning something new. Let's take that same topic of friends and strangers and look at a graph like this. This is based on a theory that says everybody on the planet is connected to everybody else through a maximum of six different people. I don't know if you've heard of this theory. It's called the Six Degrees of Separation Theory. It started actually in the 1920s as um, telecommunications was being developed, railroads were being developed, and a Hungarian uh, psychologist suggested that we were all becoming closer together. And he said this theory that he thought everyone was connected through six other people. Um, there were studies done in the 1970s about it, um, and it's coming back again now because of internet stuff. So, for example, I am three degrees away from Barack Obama. My parents have friends in Toronto whose son is in Washington. He works for the State Department, and he has meetings with the President of the United States. So, one, two, three. So, that's, that, that's, how, that's how that works. Just think, tell a partner, are you two, three, four degrees of separation away from anybody important politician or something like that, or an author or whatever, tell a partner. When I've done this kind of activity with my classes, a lot of interesting things have come up, and people have said that. And also, we're getting out the same language. I have a friend, I have a colleague, a co-worker, and so on, people you know. And uh, we do this together. I work with him. I play tennis with someone who does this, or I live next to the person who does this, and so on. I would suggest that this um, kind of thing is, has more of a chance of a person coming home from my class and saying to their wife, husband, parents, children, hey, you know what I learned today? I learned, actually, that we... Da, da, da. Again, all three things can serve to teach language. What else are we learning through language? Um, another thing that I've been reading a lot recently, as well as um, the idea of culture in international English, was the use of images. Um, and there's been a lot read, written about this recently, especially in our field, Partly because um, we are said to be living in the age of image. Images have far much more power now. What, this is an image that we could use to teach what? Kitchen. Kitchen, kitchen vocabulary, yeah? Um, this kind of image just comes from a stock library of images. The stock library is not just used by people like me writing a book. It's also used by magazines, um, by furniture companies, by hotels and things like that. So they're often very nice photos, but they often reflect a very kind of wealthy looking kitchen. My kitchen doesn't look like this. Does yours? Maybe none of our kitchens are as clean as this, 
but also usually there's uh, images in educational materials are sometimes criticized for portraying something quite wealthy, yes? What happens if we have an image to teach a kitchen like this? This is also a kitchen. Now, I wouldn't say you would use just this image, but if we had two or three different kinds of kitchens, there's a chance of more critical thinking that could be activated here. One student said to me, uh, neither kitchen has a fridge. Actually, if you look, they don't. There's another photographer whose work is fantastic in this respect. He's a man called Peter Menzel, and he did a book called Hungry Planet. And in Hungry Planet, he took, photo, he took a family from different countries around the world, and he took a photo of all their food on the table for a week. I'm going to show you the Bolivian family. Isn't that a fantastic photo? And the American family. You can start seeing that there are opportunities for critical interaction with these images, especially if you have them next to each other. People can not only compare and contrast them, and they can go further, other critical thinking. For example, if this family were to visit the other family, what would they find difficult? If the other family stayed for a week at this family's house, what would they find difficult? If this family came to your house for a week for the students, what would you prepare them? If you had to eat at this family's house for a week, what would you eat? So we can also teach food and stuff, but we can go a bit further with critical um, work on images, which is what we've tried to do in Global. So another tweet there. Use and exploitation of images critical. Um, I've been touching a bit on culture. I want to come back to that a little bit. The idea of high culture, low culture, these words about culture um, uh, you know, keep coming up in the literature. High culture is continued, considered things like um, literature, art, classical music, and so on. Uh, low culture is a derogatory term for stuff like probably reality shows um, or the Paris Hilton kind of things, considered low culture. Culture with a capital C is a bit like high culture. It's knowledge of you know, uh, things about a, a country, uh, about its history and stuff, as well as literature and so on. Culture with a small c is uh, things like, do people shake hands or kiss? Do they kiss twice on the cheeks when they meet? What time do people have lunch and so on in a country? So everyday life. And I think that a lot of culture in um, course books has moved away from high culture to culture with a small c, for very good reasons. Again, because whose culture do we choose? But I think there has been another kind of culture that has appeared in uh, language course books, another kind of culture that has been rising over the past 15 years, and that's a rise in celebrity culture. Um, and this is what I wonder, is this part of what new international English is? Is there a celebrity culture? Do you notice that there have been celebrities in your books? Yes? Um, the, it's been rising across everything. It's not just course books. Um, I did some research on this, that uh, rising in, for example, clothing, the uh, clothing industry, a rising of celebrity labels there, a rising of celebrity news in, across news outlets, celebrity magazines are going up, have been going up every year over the past 10 years in major Western countries. Uh, there's also been celebrity perfumes. There's been a, a, a celebrity television, reality TV, and so on. There's been a rise in that, and it's also happened in our educational materials, perhaps because we are reflecting a reality of what's going on.